Doc with my co-hosts, Fumpy. Hello. And old Swissy Bear. <laughs> what's, what's going on guys uh so today uh we're gonna talk gaming and we're gonna dive into some good topics here so the first one i want to talk about is uh what game got you hooked into gaming uh swiss you want to kick us off sure um kind of an old school gamer uh i'm nes is the first console i really remember playing um it's Super Mario Brothers, specifically the third one. Um, I can remember playing the first game and getting frustrated with it. And I was at a young enough age where, like, you don't know the difference between games so much. So, like, I kind of like this one, but it felt too hard. So we had the third one as well, second and third. I didn't like the second one at all. And then and put the third one in. And that's the game I have, like, my first memories of playing to remember levels and uh trying to find different things like the first time i dropped back behind the white one mm -hmm. the white block in like <clears throat> world one two or one three something yeah. like that um but like for me that's a game where i didn't beat it as a kid but i remember it's probably the first time i like grinded in a game so to speak, where I, I just kept playing it and just kept playing it. Like, I didn't get frustrated with the fact that I couldn't get past, like, World 2. I just kept going. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, like, annoyed my cousins and everything because I constantly wanted to play and wanted somebody to play with me and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I Super Mario Brothers 3 for me. To this day, I will go back and play it and stuff. Like, it's, it's one of my favorite <laughs> old school games. Fun fact about me, I did not, I, I've never fully played through any Mario game at all oh wow i like like any like a, like actual like platforming running like ones yeah i don't i don't know why i know for me like when you talk about r3 even that that wasn't what got me into it but like i i, I get what you're saying because i'll go play it on emulators i'll or anywhere i can find it i'll play it I think it was a beautiful mix of all fantastic designs that they wanted with how they were going to make the game I, I I could definitely see why that hooked you in. Yeah, oh, dude, it controls movement, everything like that game just it, like a speed run dream, dude. You that the jumping was on point. It wasn't like one where it, there was that delay. It was a lot better. Oh yeah, he speed and everything too, and being able to fly and Tanuki suit and like it just it introduced so Tanuki many different suit. power ups. Like, I remember getting the frog suit for the first time and being like, what the fuck do I do with this? And you're so excited <laughs> that you're like, I'm going to use it right away. And you use it on a level where it's horrible because it's meant for underwater and places you have to jump long distances. And you're like, this was a simple level and I just screwed myself. Um, you know, the first time you realize a power-up's a bad thing sometimes. Uh, yeah. So have you ever... Uh... Have you... Did you like only the Mario games that are like the platform ones or did you enjoy... Uh... What was it, 64? Where you actually went yeah, in like Peach's Castle and shit? Galaxy I think, and Sunshine. I, I, think and... Super Mario, I think Super Mario 64 is a good game. Personally struggled with it, mostly because of the controls, controller. Mm -hmm. um, I had a hard time getting used to it, and I didn't have an N64, so any chance I got to play it, it always felt really clunky just because no familiarity and being a whole different way to play. You know, it wasn't just moving left or right, A, B, maybe another button. Uh but then, like, Super Mario Odyssey, Galaxy, uh, I do enjoy those. Um, obviously, I like the new Super Mario Bros. and stuff like that. Those are nice side-scrollers and stuff, too. Have you ever played a Mario Maker? I have never played a Mario Maker. I, I have think... seen video and stuff, but I've never played one. Like, have you... Okay, so you see Mario Maker. Have you seen those insane levels where people, like, like you cannot stop. Everything needs to be precise. Yeah, I would never be able to do that. Okay, that was, that was my next question. If like yeah, that's something that would be that interesting. Skill level. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm what I'm what is I, I'm a coin collector. I'm that guy that uh, I, I've played just really nice runs of it. It's not like I'm a speed runner by any means, but I'm going to collect a bunch of coins and extra power ups if I can. Like I'm that guy that's just going to keep generating lives as often as possible, and I'm an okay player. I can get myself through most situations. So. 
Have you ever went back to the Mar- the first Mario game and try to beat it? So oh, I know yeah. you said you okay. I've beaten one. I've beaten three. So Super Mario Brothers three is actually one of those games where I have beaten it using the warp whistles. If you don't know, there's two different warp whistles in the game that allow you to skip ahead multiple worlds. There's eight worlds. I've beaten the game that way where. I got a bunch of extra lives in the early worlds, and then I warped up to level 8 and skipped like three worlds, or world 8 and skipped like three worlds, and beat it that way. I have never outright just beat the game, though, without using the warp whistles. Uh, I have tried many times, and that is something I am yet to accomplish. Uh, I can get to world 8 with 30 to 50 lives, depending on how I'm doing, and uh, three or four pages worth of power-ups that I can use but I am just fried and cannot get myself through those harder levels. Hmm. It is definitely a slog. Uh, there's a lot of love. It's like, they don't start out as a lot, but as you go up there, uh, like yeah. it's a long world, world more like difficult. Eight worlds, and I think they average like, I want to say nine or ten mm-hmm. levels per world, so... Yeah. Plus secondary shoot-offs and other stuff. Mm-hmm. That's all. There's hammer bros and stuff all over the map, so there's some extra fights you have to do. Nice. Uh, well, for me, uh, something that got me hooked on gaming was pure jealousy. <laughs> nice. As the baby bear of my family, I had an older brother all about gaming, literally every system and he was a dick (laughs) he uh (laughs) didn't let me play and if he did let me play he knew that he was gonna win and like he's just like here come play this game with me i'm like all right and i'm obviously just trying to figure it out or button mashing or something like that just for him to fucking murk me um so that's kind of what got me into it's more or less a you tell me i can't have it i want it like (laughs) Um, so my family had a, a, a finished basement and it was like a, a bar, but they didn't use it. So we use it as a, uh, like we, we put our TV on it. We sat there and the game and everything. And, uh, one of my favorite memories was, uh, it, he had the GameCube, and then, uh, I think Xbox first came out. So he started playing Xbox and I, I remember him like going to the bathroom. I started like messing with shit. And like he came back, he's like, "What'd you do?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> don't yell at me. <laughs> um, but obviously, so when you get a new game uh, system, the other one's kind of obsolete. Um, so I I took that damn GameCube. Like that's something. Like it had all the games that I wanted to play. They had uh, Sonic Adventures two controversial game some people are not controversial game but like some people just don't like it we'll get you to play a good sonic game don't worry yeah (laughs) (laughs) heard sonic adventures one (laughs) i think you Um, mean sonic the hedgehog 2 um (laughs) (laughs) um so i I definitely stole that because i remember him having uh one of the mario parties where they introduced the mic for the gamecube so i was like i was like talking to my sister because she wasn't into gaming at all I was like, come play this game with me. You can like sing and try to match these notes and everything, and then we'll play Mario Party. Um so like little little games like that. That's, that's why I'm so fond of like Mario Parties and Mario Karts, just for the fact that it gives me nostalgia, I guess. Um but then uh when my brother got uh, the 360, he uh, uh one of the games that he fell in love with and just dominated, and I was like, I'll never be that good, Guitar Hero and he went so damn hard on that he like uh max level and everything he's like hitting all of it 100 percent. and i was like can i try so he let me try and he put it easy i was like still messing up with my fingers couldn't go past medium because i can't get that damn orange button with my pinky because my pinky's stupid as hell Mm -hmm. um but yeah so once he got the 360 i realized like this is like a lot more than a, just a couple games. This is going to be a lot. So for for Christmas, that was my first system was the Xbox 360 because I asked for it. I was like, I really want a system. I really want that, and, and I got it. And then I the only game I had for it was a 
like an ATV versus dirt bike or some shit like that. And I played the hell out of that game. Like, again, it was the only one I didn't have online. I didn't have friends. So I was just like, I'm just going to play this damn game. And just killed it. Nice. But yeah. All right. So me getting hooked on gaming. Um, yeah, originally, I played Pong on the Atari at my buddy's house. Because his dad's like, oh, I'll beat everybody at this. Because, you know, parents like to talk shit. Beat up on <laughs> kids in the games, you know. <laughs> Typical stuff. But, uh, yeah, it got me interested in it. And I was like, oh, it's kind of fun. But it's pretty simple, whatever. And then I went to the arcade. Arcade con- cabinets. Like, I played Mortal Kombat, all that stuff in the arcades. Hell, yeah. That shit was fun. But, like. Honestly, the Atari, because then I went back, and I played, obviously, not just Pong, like Pitfall, and Asteroids, yeah, and pitfall. Space Invaders, like, all the classics. It was, like, simplistic, but super fun, because no matter how good you are, you still find a way to lose, you know. Instead of food. <laughs> yeah, dude, and then uh, the one I never really got into was Qbert. I think I, that's it. Yeah, that's I, that's incredible. It's really weird, and I never really understood it. I mean, like, oh, I was gonna ask, out. can you explain to me the premise of the game? Because oh, aren't you supposed God. to turn on like all the lights? It, it's, it's a like... puzzle game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A puzzle platformer. Super weird for little kids to play. But like, and then you know, you go to the next test like the nes and then you got super mario you got zelda you got all these games and then it just progressively gets better and better and at at some point you're like i don't even know why i keep playing but i really enjoy it (laughs) you know like you're just playing all these games uh quick question about the arcades and like game cabinets and everything is like you said mortal kombat was that like did mortal kombat come out for game cabinets first then systems yeah See, that's that. I think that's really cool. I wish I like. Obviously, like. Yeah, because like, it was an wanted ar- to be around for that arcade game, and it was so popular. Like, well, uh, I guess we're gonna make some money. Right. Like a little history on arcade cabinets. There, I guess. Um. So it was easier for them to put better technology in the arcade cabinets and do a limited run on them to make the buying price higher for themselves. But it also meant that a game like Mortal Kombat is a great example of this. So the arcade cabinet had amazing sound, amazing graphics for the time, and all the blood and gore that you know for that franchise, right? Mm -hmm. However, when it got ported to the home consoles, uh, the home consoles were the Super Nintendo at the time and the uh, Genesis. So Nintendo's family friendly. They removed all the blood. The soundtrack was also slightly brought down, and so were the graphics, and the controls were kind of compared to what you had at the arcade, which was extremely reactive and everything else. The home consoles had a bit of a ping. There was there was a delay. It was a little sloppier. Um, Genesis was the kind of the same process there. It might have been a little better here and there, but Genesis had blood. But again, it wasn't quite as sharp, it wasn't quite as well done as the arcade cabinet, and that is how almost every port from an arcade cabinet to a console went during that time frame, because, like I said, when you're trying to mass-produce a few hundred million game consoles that need to be able to support multiple types of games, you're stuck with a certain type of happy medium, versus an arcade cabinet, man, you know, Dr. Barry, you could probably speak pretty highly to this. Uh, the arcade cabinet, you could gear specifically to what the game needed, so higher graphics card, whatever. Yeah, because you had all that space, and like now the arcades you go, they they literally are playing the game on a TV. Or is it, you know, it's crazy. And that's a good segue into our second question here. Uh, yeah. Graphics or uh, gameplay? Uh, for me, uh, since, uh, okay, so for me, I don't indulge in like, like, uh, like high AAA games and like ones that are like 
everyone's played like Elden or Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. Um, but uh, if it's graphics versus gameplay, with the game, the games that I have played, I'm gonna have to go with the gameplay, uh, just for the simple fact that, uh, like, for example, like Minecraft, it's fucking eight bit. It's been eight bit. It's gonna stay eight bit. It's like you don't need better graphics. And it, frankly, if they added better graphics to that game, people would fucking hate it. People would shit on that game so much. Um, uh, another example is uh super meat boy it's a small arcade game oh yeah um i i, I love that game it Hard it was a hell. fun yeah yes it is uh it was a it was a fun game um and again 8-bit like you don't need the the best graphics that you're pointing across but i do have to give credit where it's due which some of the graphics that i have written down um until dawn i think that came out in 14 mm-hmm um and that was killer i mean to be fair they used a lot of cgi to actually make the characters who are actual actors into gaming people um but uh, again to be fair uh the content of that game is amazing like the whole butterfly effect like any like you can save all these people or all these people can die due to your choices yeah. like i always the fact of the butterfly effect it's always been fun for me um uh, same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn. Didn't finish it. Don't hate me. Just because of <laughs> <laughs> commitment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, because my game style is more or less like linear point A to point B instead of open world. Um, so uh, Doom, Last of Us, great graphics, great, uh, great uh, story. And it was just point A to point B. That's what made me fall in love with those games. But I mean, like, obviously I can't hate on skyrim or stuff like that because like the graphics are good but it's also bethesda where they make shitty graphics kind of on purpose more or less glitches yeah. Yeah. um which which is yeah. their own which is their own little thing that actually makes people fall in love with that so like sure a nice piece of art is great and all but like having their own little rendition of like a good piece of art that actually looks a little bit better is kind of more fun their own artistic to it yeah yeah um and <laughs> then i have to go back to the uh the gameplay over graphics too uh for dishonored amazing game love them the first one <laughs> like the graphics sucked <laughs> like if, if there's a, if we can post a, a picture of the fucking hand size compared to their damn bodies <laughs> it's so fucking stupid i laugh <laughs> every time i see it like their hands are fucking massive dude. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody forgot to scale the game. Honestly. Awesome. But again, killer story. Yeah. So I'm indifferent. It depends on the like what they do. Like it's I I I can't honestly name a game that's fucking knocked everything out of the park with everything, you know? I know for me, like graphics or gameplay, like Elden Ring, fantastic graphics, gameplay's good, controls are kinda wonky. I mean, it's a FromSoft game. That's what they do. But, like, if that brings it all together. But then you have games like... Uh, what's the oh, Man, a game with... Well, you got Dishonored. Like, with the big hands, that's... The, the big hands is, like, a graphical issue. So, like, that could ruin an entire game. It, yeah. That I'm... graphics <laughs> can overshadow, overshadow fantastic controls and everything. I think with that... So like, like that's not even like an artistic choice. That is just a, uh, a fuck up. I, it very well could be a fuck up. They couldn't figure it out, so they left it in the game because it's time to ship. Like I know with Outer Worlds, uh, there's a bat that if you hit people with, it'll readjust their face. It was a glitch. Couldn't figure it out. Made it into a feature. <laughs> that's what you do. If you can't figure it out. Use it if it doesn't destroy the game. You know. Yeah. So like gameplay for me, gameplay and controls are really important because like grow home graphically it's polygons story-wise you're a little robot who wants to go home dude like why not and you get to climb up a giant tree and if you fall it's a long fucking way down man you're going up in space <laughs> you know that's that's why honestly i think gameplay does trump graphics i mean it, 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 what's your take swiss 
I, I'm I'm right there. Uh, so like if I when asked the question or posed with the question, I think back to like a quick gloss over of like games that I played the hell out of. Um, all of them are because of the gameplay. You know what I mean? Like they control well and it plays well. It's got a good story. The graphics are all different in all the different games, the style, the everything, and it's never the way the game looked that sticks out in my mind. It's always how it functioned um, and the way it felt playing the game, um, the way you felt going through the storylines and decisions and, you know, so like... <clears throat> I don't necessarily have a genre that I stick to for gaming. Like I'm not huge into first person shooters or, you know, I like platforming, but that's not the only thing I do. And I like sports games. I'm kind of all over the board, but it always comes down to the gameplay itself and the controls for me. Um, Cause I enjoy Madden, but I also still enjoy Tecmo Super Bowl from, you know, the oh, NES sure, yeah. and that's eight bit, you know, craptastic little graphics. I mean, it was great for the time, but like by comparison, it's not, I get the same amount of joy out of both games and it's because of the type of gameplay they have. It has nothing to do with the presentation and everything to do with the process of the play. And I guess a, another little argument for this is like, I mean, look where, where it all started. It was all 8-bit. It was very shit graphics, but it was all fun where it was. Um, and then obviously you get excited for better graphics, like more realism and everything. And then you get to what what was it, Cyberpunk? Oh, where yeah. they <laughs> focus so heavily on the graphics, which is great. Do that. But like I haven't played it, uh, but Doctor, you've played it. It was it a shit game? It was so like, broken. I, yeah. The the graphics were absolutely horrendous on PS4. They looked like like old school, like Metal Gear Solid style. Like the original version, it was bad. Oh man. wow, bad texture and everything. Yeah, it was horrendous. It took them a couple of weeks to fix it because it was an issue with something in their coding. But clearly, they didn't test that that would be a problem. But you know, again, now would I play it again? Maybe, but like, I don't care. It's just it's literally um, a futuristic GTA Five. Yeah. Except you can choose the size of your penis. Like that <laughs> yeah, fucking that... matters, dude. Or or your titties if you're a girl. So like I mean you know. I mean to be fair, maybe that's what they were going for. That little that little like ah, this is funny to like make it, just do well, it. you know you're probably right. It's to differentiate from the others in the genre. This dude, you, you can, can make your dick. Like this your dude, you got a predetermined <laughs> dick. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, it's stupid as fuck to talk I about. Mean, like, like Kendall. <laughs> you got a predetermined dick dude you're weird Get <laughs> how dare you not model your own dick bro <laughs> and this is the awkward portion um yeah <laughs> how did we get here oh. uh, <laughs> all right so again like i don't know with the get graphics like uh, vr games their graphics could be way better, right? And but the gameplay would suck, and I would still hate it. Yeah. yeah. So I think, in, in conclusion, I think we all kind of agree it's definitely gameplay over graphics. Yeah. Because like Call of Duty, the, the graphics are good and the gameplay is fun. My biggest gripe is the constant issues with their with their servers. Like, what are you guys doing? That different. Like, orange. If we would play without lag and packet lost and all that crap in person it's probably a much different game too like uh yesterday we were streaming uh some private match on call of duty check us out uh <laughs> and the, every, every time uh because it was uh doctor against me at swiss and doctor was always on our team even though we like specifically set it to yep. where he was on his own team so it's like these these small things that like this is you're focused on like money and like oh set out these new skins but you can't focus on you know actually making the game and it literally good. was a setting pre-match i said it and we played two freaking rounds and then all of a sudden I'm like why the hell is fumpy green because i yeah. went to knife yep. him because i told him i was going to execute him Which... and you never did no we had a chain execution no that shit was dope <laughs> so 
Who the fuck? <laughs> oh, son of a. Nah, yeah, <laughs> what's up, buddy? <laughs> what's up, buddy? <laughs> what's up, buddy? <laughs> I'm talking about you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, like, that type of stuff ruins gameplay. If gameplay is bad <clears> and you're playing with friends, it's not. No matter what the graphics look like, you're not going to really have fun. Yeah, dude. It, gameplay is what matters. Good it, graphics are just a bonus. That's the icing on the cake, man. If, if you. Yep. Yeah. You, you're not going to get me to buy or play if it's good looking, but crappy control and crappy gameplay. On the Which flip is... side, you can have some gnarly looking visuals, but goddamn, if it's an addictive gameplay, I'm in. Right? Because, like, visuals you can always fix after a product is out like with updates nowadays like back in the day you couldn't but like now you could send a patch out you can't right. rework your entire game without having a massive update and like that's a lot of shit you can break even with the visuals you can break your game so like yeah I if they don't have good visuals and good gameplay I'm picking gameplay yep agreed yeah. All right, so question number three, guys. Uh, name a game that killed the franchise for you. And uh, for me, it was Tomb Raider Chronicles in 2000. Uh, in every All game right. I've ever played that was a sequel, it was uninspired. Um, it was like copy-paste almost. Like, it really did do well, much. Like a cash grab. It, it, it seemed like that. Like, But it, then again, it was the sixth version, sixth or seventh version of the Tomb Raider franchise by that studio so they're probably sick and tired of the shit but so were all really previous five yeah, like, games good oh uh, they started out fit like tomb raider one was really good tomb raider two is like eh, and it started going down and then they also I know when... released the first like three of those really fast yeah they were all within like, the a year. first three games came out in like five years mm -hmm. Oof. yeah so number Jeez. one was fantastic i, I loved it well, obviously if the polygons and shit at that time we were like, oh my god, it's so realistic. It it, it fucking wasn't, okay? <laughs> but you'd never seen anything like that in the game, so you're like, oh, that's real, man. But, uh, yeah, for the, honestly, for that game, though, there was little differentiation between that and the other IPs that came before it. it was, that's why I felt really copy pasta. But I did give it another chance, and I played the Temple of Osiris. It's a top-down third-person, just like, you know, constantly shooting wave enemy type game, which is pretty fun. But I think that's what made it really fun. It, it wasn't the typical Tomb Raider, but it had the Tomb Raider people in it. Mm -hmm. And then, let me see, what else did I say? Oh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider I played. And that was solid, but it wasn't a typical Tomb Raider game either. It was focused on the exploration and platforming more than the, the typical combat of a Tomb Raider. Okay, so a after you played the, the Tomb Raider that killed the franchise for you, you did give it another chance for yeah, the, yeah, the newer yeah, one? for sure, I did. Because okay. I was like, oh, these look fun. You know, give them a shot, because I like to play new games, and if they're something that I've enjoyed in the past, regardless of if it killed the franchise or not, like... Right. And it was a new company. It was Square Enix instead of uh, the, the other... I did. I should have wrote it down. But the other company that made all the way up to, I think, 2002 or 2003. Looking up to see what uh, who that was made by quick, actually. Yeah. I, I can't remember their freaking studio name, man. I know Square, when Square Enix took it over, that was it was good. The games got better. That's for sure. Uh, do we have? Do we D-I-D-O-S? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. IDOS. Edis. IDOS Interactive and. Nice. But yeah, uh, definitely was not good, but. Then again, sometimes change is good. So, you know, not liking something yeah. is going to be all right originally, but. Yeah, as long as they can, I mean, like, especially with, uh, we already talked about this, but No Man's Sky, as long as they can bounce back and do something, it's actually, like, worthwhile and instead of actually being like, that, eh, it's dead. Let it die. Like, they oh, can yeah. take chances. Yep. Yeah, it happens with a lot of games. 
Which so. is actually why it was kind of hard for me to pick mine. Um, because, like, I think I'll always give games a chance if it's, like, especially if, like, there was games in the past that I fell in love with and I was just like, uh, for, I mean, for example, uh, on my list, I have uh, Back for Blood, which was uh, a Left for Dead uh, coming, uh, coming, coming back to the scene. Um, Left for Dead, uh, Left for Dead 2. Yep. Okay. And then, uh, so I played those really fun playing with my playing with my buddies um so we when we heard there was another one back for blood we're like yeah let's, let's fucking go let's get it um and swiss we kind of talked about this at work uh where me and you both started playing it and uh it just kind of they call of duty it like you said like yeah. immediate <laughs> like it just, yeah it was <laughs> got to the menu yeah. screen and knew something wasn't right yeah, and it was just like I wanted it to be good, just because like, okay, one zombie games are hard to do. Uh, they're they're stale. They're it zombies is two thousand and fucking sixteen. That's it's gone. It's done. It's over with. Um, so if you can like come out with uh, a game that actually might sound good for a zombie game in two thousand and nineteen twenty, when did they come out? It people are gonna click and you better make sure you did it right and i don't think they did it right at all um so i i guess uh for me zombie games are kind of dead in the ground for me for now uh, uh they'll rise <laughs> again <laughs> that was good um, um but uh, sticking with zombies uh but uh call of duty zombies uh i think everybody and their and their mother has some memory with zombies uh from world at war black ops both amazing black ops 2 i enjoyed it it was good black ops 3 they introduced gobble gum they introduced different uh alien superpowers mm -hmm. fuck off with all that i'm sorry it like it, it wasn't good it, the maps sucked like and i think they try to introduce i think in black ops 2 they try to introduce uh kind of like a story lore to keep you playing even though it's literally just how long can you survive and believe it or not that gets stale like that gets old very quickly yeah you can just train them up turn around exactly. kill some train them up turn around rinse and repeat you know exactly so i think uh zombie game or call of duty zombies kind of bunk now can't really uh get behind it because like they're gonna keep adding shit to grab your attention to see if they can still get some money out of it. So I think that's kind of dead too. Um, last one for me. 2016. Picture it. You and your friends. Thinking back in the good old days <laughs> where you played Tony Hawk Pro Skater. The yeah. golden era of Tony Hawk. That's and, you, and then you turn to your friend. You're like, hey man, you know what would be really fun to play right now? Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah, it would. But you don't have any old consoles. So you settle for the next best thing. The new Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Fucking garbage. So bad. <laughs> so damn bad. I was so upset with that damn game. I was just like... <laughs> hey, did nobody ever tell you never settle, man? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the like, reason they say eight, that. You must have your... Like, we literally dropped, like, I, I think it was, like, a month after it came out, and we both dropped $60, played it for, like, a fucking week, and we're like, this is fucking garbage. I was like... You yeah. even gave it a solid week. That's that's impressive, most of like... Wait, yeah, because, yeah, again, we really wanted to play a skating game. Uh, why we didn't go skate? Don't know. Don't judge me. Um, no, Should have. Yeah. Um, but, because, uh, like, one of my favorite games, also, people may hate me for this one, American Wasteland. I loved it. I love being the rebel. I love breaking down uh, the giant tortilla chip and it's just like collecting it for your own skate park. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a good story. Um, so I kind of wanted something like that. I also wanted something like uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, which thankfully they remastered, yeah. and which me and my buddy both bought that and we actually had fun. <laughs> are they actually good remasters then? They are good oh, remasters. Yeah. Good. They are really good. Did they leave um, the soundtrack so, the same? 
Updated. Yeah, I think so, yes. Added some Updated. extra songs. Oh, nice. That's but awesome. yeah, no, that, we were happy that game came out. I think it was like shortly after, too. We're like, oh, hey, well, let's blow another $60. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'll we'll be satisfied this time. Uh, yeah. For me, this one was kind of personal. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I really enjoyed the gaming. I really enjoyed the, this franchise. And uh, its third installment, I never finished. Um, Mass Effect. Uh, played the second one first, then went back and played the first one. And for anybody who's never played it, the games in both of them, you kind of assemble a crew. So you recruit and go on missions and their characteristics you can explore around your ship and have conversations with these people there are entire side quests for these npcs like they do a really good job of developing personality for these npcs with you um then the third game came and i i got it early like two or three days after its release um and started playing and i got probably a third of the way through the game and like three of those crew members I had been playing with this whole time through the first two games died, <clears throat> and there was like no way to save them, or I really took the wrong path or something. So it got to the point for me though where like, you know, it, I found out later there are ten different characters that you've been playing with for the first two games that can die in the game, and like that's kind of a main focal point of its storyline. That is are brutal. all the characters you've met and played with dying. So, I mean, I got a third of a way through it and just stopped playing because it was depressing and painful. The whole way through, everything you did felt futile. Like, oh, it didn't matter what I did for this person, they died. Didn't matter what I did for that person, they died. I couldn't talk this person out of that, they died. Um, didn't matter how many things I killed, how many people you shot. Um, Tali Boss Normandy was the breaking point for me. You're on a cliffside, and no matter what decision you make, she falls off the cliff. Then it gives you a quick action button, like press X. And you think, like, sweet, you can dive and save her. No, no, no. It just gives you that. You watch her fall to her death every time. Um, And, like, that was the moment I quit playing. Uh, They've made a couple of other Mass Effect games since. I have not bothered to... I played really Andromeda a bit, and it, I don't. I haven't gotten very far into it. I'm not a fan. So, gotcha. as a uh, a person that's never played any Mass Effect game, like, how do I say this without? Because <clears throat> they could have ended it nice, sweet, happy, and everything. I think that's kind of a cool, different road to take to end the game. Like, why did it have to be happy? It it's not that way. The whole franchise is based on your decisions. You decide if you're a good guy or a bad guy. You can decide to just fucking kill everybody. You won't get certain team members then. You'll end up with some other stuff going on. Like, so you have dictated who you are the whole way through these games. Oh, they so kind of just ripped it away been, from you? So if you've been the hero for the first two games, suddenly you have nothing. You You can try to be the hero, but it'll get you nowhere. If you've been the bad guy through the first two games, doesn't matter the same thing's going to happen to you huh so in a gaming franchise where it was always about there are other ways to do this and you can do this or you could have saved this or you could have killed this person suddenly it started putting you in spots where it was like didn't matter minor changes but didn't change the narrative of the story like it did for all the other ones I guess that would be kind of a kick in the dick to like have all the power in the world and let me just rip it the hell away from you real quick. Yeah, no, I get it. Well, and like the first one that dies, you're like, okay, man, I really need to, you know, get my shit together, tighten up my stuff. And then the second one dies. And like for me, the second one was the doctor, uh, Morden. He created a disease that prevented an entire species from being able to procreate. And then he figured out how to cure it and refuses to do anything you say to try to save his life. He does everything he can to get the cure to that species so that they can start to populate again. So no no decision, no dialogue, no choices you make will actually save him at all. He will inevitably get on that ship and go to his death. I am kind of curious uh, 
if they like release any like uh interview or whatever why they did that the way they did because it, it has to be a reason but you like oh, clearly people sure they would was. know that people would get upset uh, the game had a lot of hype when it came out and stuff too. Like you kind of knew it was gonna wrap up the franchise, mm -hmm. but it right away set a really depressing tone. Like the uh, initial interlude play is you saving a child as you watch aliens come down and destroy entire planets, and people die in front of this kid and stuff. And it's it's just an immediate, really dark place to go. And not that the franchise was happy go lucky by any means, but it was kind of a really playful franchise. Um, it had good satire and jokes in it and stuff, but the third one just had that ominous tone all the way through and never let up. At least through the parts I played. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think that was actually probably more of a linear game than they want to admit. Because I'm guaranteeing it was, if you there's nothing you can do, they, that was a decision based on whatever they thought was going to be good, but like, that's brutal. I don't know if they were getting ready to reload for the next chapter because, like, you know, you'd followed Shepard, the main character, you around for these three games. I don't know if they were intending intending this to be the launching point for the next saga, for the next captain. Yeah, because I think franchise. Andromeda is next, and that's a new person. So, but yeah, like I said, that one just kind of third of the way through the game. It was like, cool, this game is what it is, but uh. I'm out. I'm I'm playing this to enjoy myself and be immersive, not to make me go to the funeral. <laughs> yeah, like... right. No shit. I guess I'm going to the bathroom, slitting my wrist. Slit <laughs> my wrist and crack my heart. <laughs> Your love is in Ohio, you know. Hey man, you know you know. <sighs> but yeah, that's uh, that's fucking brutal. So, with that, that wraps this episode. But I do want to say that we are going to uh, be doing a Madden tournament amongst us. I randomly spun and got seeded all the teams. And we're going to spin and get our teams. And we're going to make some videos out of it. So you can check that out on YouTube. SXC Bear. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. From Doc... Bumpy and Swiss. See you later.